Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Malibu Pacific Church podcast. Woo! We got another episode, and we're really excited that you're listening right now. But if you haven't listened to this past week's sermon, I would say press pause right now and go listen to it so this podcast makes a little more sense. But again, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You're here, and you're listening, and we got Andy here, everybody. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Woo! Andy, how's your day going so far? Good. Good, good. Yeah? I uh, got up at 5. There's a 5 in the morning? I thought it was 6. Woo! Once you get up at 5, and they get your coffee and start drinking it, and then it you realize, ooh, it's six. I'm oh, sorry, it's <laughs> it's five, not six o'clock. I'm still waking up. Oops, oh, big mistake. You're trying to <laughs> I'm trying to win the day already, huh? You got that extra know. hour. Oh my gosh, misread that. <laughs> it happens. Did you have Did you have a bonus hour? Was it pretty good? It was great. Got my studying done. Got all my sermon notes off, and got a ton of stuff done. So it's oh. good. It's the best time of day, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. I love that early morning. I usually wake up uh, at about five thirty or six as well, but I go on a hike or a run or something like oh, that. Great. I walk with my dog, dude, every single morning. So all it's right. my my good time to just have a uh, good life, if you will. So that's the segue into this last all week's right. sermon series. It is a good life. It is a good life. Yep. Hey, it was the second week of two services. What were what are your thoughts? How do you think it's going great or amazing? Oh, I think it's amazing. <laughs> it's been amazing. And yep. uh numbers leveled out at both services. I think it, it, it takes six, eight months until things sort of settle and we figure out which service we like. Or realizing it's one service in three different places and mm -hmm. so i have choices mm -hmm. so that's that's also the key for everybody but i think just going great i think we had 24 fourth through eighth graders uh not including uh our leaders yep. so don't even just look at the the seats on a sunday morning we had a full children's ministry full student ministry and then adults as well so there's a lot happening on the campus yeah and a lot happening online too, which is really oh, fun great. too. Oh, so, great! Yeah, which is really awesome. Yeah, got anywhere between sixty to hundred people watching live every wow. single Sunday. Wow! So it's pretty awesome numbers. That's an entire church right there, right? Online church, Woo. excellent. Thanks for watching. Yeah, online. Yep. So again, one service and three options: nine yep. thirty, eleven, and online on demand whenever you want to watch it. So okay, we're in good life session two right now. If there was one thing that everybody could walk away with, the bottom line, what would it be? Well, we're talking about surrender. The good life is actually about surrendering your life to God. And uh, it's, a, it's a touchy word. I don't want to surrender. I don't want to give up. I don't want to let go. But uh, the surrendered life is a good life. And a surrender to a who, to Jesus, is a good life, is really the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, what does that mean? How do we live that out? And this last week, we just talked about there's a process in surrendering mm -hmm. versus, you know, oh, okay, you know, just giving it all up. We we don't usually do that with any area of our lives, mm -hmm. especially our our spiritual life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we're talking about surrendering. Yeah. I love the... Um, Tough subject. <clears throat> it totally is. I, but I love the way that you uh, painted the picture of uh following jesus and how maybe that wasn't a uh maybe a good idea this guy's just like all right come follow me and you just drop the nets okay i'll go i guess like what what do your parents think what do your family members think then that, that's like that true surrender yeah um and uh, it, it made me think about uh past relationships or even people that i've known who have followed jesus and it put a strain on their relationships uh with family members or like what would be some good advice if somebody's experienced that of surrendering or yeah, leaving sur everything or what yeah do you mean? like like yeah. uh leaving like in surrendering to jesus yeah. and parents ha you know are like don't believe in that thing uh, that's fake yeah. that's malarkey and it creates a strain yeah yeah well that is the cost uh and i've, I've heard that a lot that is the cost of uh following jesus you may lose some friends mm -hmm. absolutely and maybe even unfortunately maybe some family members as well yeah. so yeah i guess my question is um there is a cost to following Jesus, and sometimes we don't know that cost. Uh, what would you uh, say for somebody who is experiencing that cost, and it might feel like it, it costs too much? What What would your your response? Be? Oh, well, yeah, there there always is a cost mm -hmm. um, in leaving something and going towards something else, and mm -hmm. and whenever you're um, 
making the right choice or doing something that's better or going in a certain direction, you're always going to have some people disagree with that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, just think about Peter when Jesus said, are you, let's go fishing again. Yeah. There was a cost of his, (laughs) his reputation in the community. You don't do it during the day. He's already cleaned up the nets. He's going to have to do it all over again. Mm-hmm. So there is a cost to Peter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it may be for you, a reputation, some money, some of your time, absolutely. But in that moment, we do not know what hangs in the balance of saying yes or no to Jesus. Mm. And his yes is always grander and bigger. And we don't know all of the, we don't know all the answers of what's going to happen. I mean, Peter had no idea someday they'd build the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome totally. for him, and that's his tomb. So Peter had no idea that he would be the first pope or he would be the leader in the Church of Jesus Christ that would transform the world. There's no way. It's unimaginable. He had no idea. Absolutely. So, yeah, with the co- there is a cost. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what hangs in the balance by not, by not uh, you know, counting our costs and actually doing it. Absolutely. We don't know. Absolutely. Well, one of the things, uh, to shift gears, one of my favorite things in the sermon was uh, you called out longtime uh, attendees and members of this church, uh, the Ludwigs, and asked them how long they've been married for. Yeah. And they were like 52 years. And I just, I was like, whoa, that's awesome. And you asked the question, did your love change? Did it evolve? Yeah. And um, I just was like, I I love to hear that wisdom because over the stages of life, I guess love does change, evolve, becomes deeper. It grows in different ways. Um, Do you feel like our love for God does that same thing? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The longer we're following him, the more trust we develop, more faith we have. Mm -hmm. And, And so absolutely. Our love for Christ matures. Love it. And he matures us. Mm-hmm. So the love that they had when they first met in college, and then they dated, and then eventually got married, and then newlyweds, and then 52 years, mm-hmm. it's a completely different love from when they first met mm-hmm. or had infatuation for each other versus 52 years of marriage and did life together. Totally. So that surrender of college when we first met, what restaurant do you want to go to, is a very different surrender to each other. Mm-hmm. Um after 52 years of marriage, that's a mature, they have fully, truly given their lives to each other. That's Absolutely. right. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, the surrender is a process mm-hmm. and it takes time. And the more we uh, trust mm-hmm. the one we're surrendering to, the more we have faith in the one we're surrendering to, mm-hmm. the more we surrender and then the more our faith grows. Gotcha. It reminded me of, um, some people who have walked away from, I think, the faith, uh, only because there's like this like puppy love, you know, with God when you first like enter the there church, it is. Yeah. you know, and it's like rah rah rah, and then I get baptized, and then yeah. and then all of a sudden, you know, a year or two in, it, it's just like I'm just not hearing from God anymore. I'm not feeling. I'm it. I'm not feeling it yeah. anymore. The Holy Spirit isn't here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that that's exactly right. Those are the stages of faith that we're going to be talking about uh, in the spring. Mm-hmm. But um, it, we can say it in the marriage also. Uh, most divorces happen between years three and five mm-hmm. because the glamour has worn off. The, mm-hmm. the wedding fun and joy has worn off. Now life is happening. Yeah. And you're going to have to actually do it now. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, there comes a point in our Christian walk where it's, are you going to do it or not, mm-hmm. Peter? Are you going to follow me Ooh, yeah. or not? Are you going to actually put these principles into practice? Are you going to trust me or not? Yeah. So are we going to do it or not? And so, yeah, that's not, that's not sexy. It's not fun. It's not, <laughs> ooh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like I, I got to let go of some things that I've hung on to for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy. Absolutely. A habit, an attitude, uh, God has asked me to do something mm-hmm. that's out of my comfort zone, mm-hmm. so it's going to cost me something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, there's a cost. That's right. I do love that you use the uh, marriage as an example um, for surrendering because one of my favorite things that you did was do the call out of um, 
uh, you got to work on your marriage. The kids can be late to soccer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like your yeah. kids would later on in life aren't going to remember being late to soccer or missing that practice. They're going to remember you putting in the time, dedication, and surrendering to your spouse. And I was just like, wow, what an amazing call to action right there. Yeah. Even if people in this room aren't necessarily married or they've gone through a divorce, it's that same thing, though, with the, the bridegroom, with, with our relationship with, with Jesus. It's that we got to just pour it all into that so that fruit can come from that and that we can have amazing relationships with one another. So I just thought, I just want to say thank you for well, calling Yeah, I was, I was doing a push to have people <clears throat> go into small groups. Yeah. What's it going to cost you? Mm -hmm. A little bit of time. I mean, it, 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 it's an ask. Mm -hmm. Jesus isn't asking you to sell everything and go and be a missionary to Africa. He's <laughs> show up to small group for an hour, hour and a half. Have some conversation, eat yeah, some snacks. It's a little inconvenient. <laughs> like yeah. push out the boat was the illustration. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but you do not know what hangs in the balance by just you know, going through that inconvenience mm -hmm. and listening to Jesus, mm -hmm. it may save your marriage. It's going to imprint your children for the rest of their lives. You are impacting and helping the next generation to win. Mm -hmm. So your little inconvenience, you have no idea mm -hmm. what hangs in the balance by your decision. Ah, I'm not going to do groups. Yeah. You have no idea. Ooh. It's a little inconvenient, but you have no idea what God will do. Yep. Absolutely. I want to give a big shout out to all the small groups too, because our group started this last week and I'll tell you what, I missed it. Yeah, like I missed, great. I, I missed it over the summer. Like it may, I was so excited to come back and we had such an awesome, awesome time. Uh, we're going through the book of Psalms, which is really fun. And wow, uh, all 150, all wow. 150. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Your group is going to last for the next 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Well, I just told him Psalms is really just, uh, woe is me. You know, it's just David going, woe is me, less of me, more of God. Yeah, we got that one down. There we yeah. go. And it's basically every Psalm anyways. So. <laughs> That's great. Oh, uh, yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, all right. So uh, as you were closing out the sermon, you had stages of surrender. Um, and I really, really hope, at least I'll just speak for myself. I took these and wrote them down. I, I put them on my phone, take my notes. And it's sit and listen, get some of your questions answered, just do it, leave your net, surrender your whole life. So the stages of surrender, to sit and listen. Like, how did how did you come up with these four stages of surrender? Well, it comes out of the text. Yeah. So that was revolutionary for me, mm -hmm. uh, because again, back to the beginning of the story, I always heard Matthew's version, Jesus came along and and they, come follow me, okay, and they just left. I was like, <laughs> that just never made any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, although Matthew, a little side note, Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience. And when a rabbi came and invited one of your kids to be a part of, um, a follower of a rabbi, mm -hmm. it's like being invited that you, you're, you've gotten accepted into Harvard. Yeah. And the president of Harvard would call you, I don't know <clears throat> if this is a good illustration or not, would call your family and say, Hey, we want your son or daughter to come to Harvard. Woo. <laughs> what would you say? I mean, yeah, and, and all the tuition is is paid for. No, we're going to Cal State. No, Ridge. yeah. So, <laughs> so no, it, it's yeah. at that level of when a dis, when a, a rabbi would invite somebody to come and be a part mm. uh, one of the, their followers, mm. because that means they're preparing them to be a rabbi, which is the highest status in society. Um, so, for a Jewish audience. Uh -huh. That's all the information they need. A rabbi came along, Harvard president admissions called and invited your son or daughter to come to school. Well, what would you do? Yeah. Yeah. The dad is going, not, hey, where are you kids? He'd be, yeah, you're going. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so Matthew's version to a, to a Jewish audience makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. But the way it's preached in America, and at youth group or camp, it's like, yeah, so you need to, if you don't surrender all, you haven't surrendered at all. That was a camp line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that one. <laughs> so I heard that one for years at camp, the camp speakers. You need to surrender all tonight and throw your stick in the fire. And 
we're doing communion and we sang 20 songs and finally everybody's crying and tired at the end of the week. So <laughs> I, sur- and we sing, I surrender all. So and we're just to... exhausted. Oh yeah. man, that's the I'll do whatever. Sauce. When do I get to go to bed? <laughs> I'll, I'll do whatever. So anyway, um, but they would preach that as okay. You need to surrender all, or you haven't surrendered at all. Mm. And they would do the Matthew passage. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry, I'm sitting in the back row with my arms folded, going that that just doesn't make sense to me. So mm-hmm. I'm a church kid, and I know how the game's played. Yeah. So the Luke version really, really was helpful, and that's to a Greek, me, Mm -hmm. um, a Greek audience, that we need a little bit more information, and that doesn't make sense. That culturally, that doesn't make sense. Yes. So the Socratic method and thought and so forth, we're Greeks, and so, you know, we're more left brain, let's say. Yeah. Um, So that's why, I mean, it's in the passage, and so when you... I mean, it's as clear as day. They sat and they listened. And I think my dad has preached on this passage for years. Yeah. And, I, you know, where did I get that is, you know, first thing you need to do is just come to church and listen. You're mm-hmm. doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. That was actually his line. Um, you know, keep gathering information. The second line really is just push out the boat a little bit and you're going to be slightly inconvenienced. Yeah. That is our starting point. Mm. Let me even back up a little bit. And working through our strategy and and really um, trying to figure out what are the steps, because our mission here is to inspire people to explore faith and take a step with Jesus. Yeah. This passage is, in my mind, what we're doing at the church. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the strategy. It's been well thought through. Yeah. So um, get your questions answered. That that is what we say for starting point. It's yeah. it's a conversation, mm-hmm. and you have questions. I just have believed in it for twenty years, and it's right there in the text. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah. So I forgot the third. Come and listen, uh, Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Matthew seven also application makes all the difference. Yeah. I love that line. I mean, I think I spent a little more time on it. Mm. Um. Is my dad preaching? Is just Peter? Are you gonna do it or not? I mean, let's go fishing again. I mean, it's kind of like I already we already went fishing. You don't fish during the day. He's explaining to Jesus how this is not <laughs> going to work. Yeah. That it's just such a classic. It's in that moment right there is where yeah. we all live. Totally. Are you going to do it or not? So and of course then and then they got up and followed Jesus. They surrendered all. Uh, became followers of Jesus, and I will make you fishers of men. That's the classic line. So then the full surrender happens. Yeah. It was just liberating to me. Oh, my goodness. I I think this was late college and early seminary um, working through that passage Mm. in Bible class. Wow. And Bible professor, you know, teaching us how to read the Bible, he broke that passage down. And so... Just over the years, it's just been very helpful from youth camp days. Yeah. Just, just do it, you know. Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. And, uh, and just to let everybody know, our strategy at the church is based on that passage. Mm. I had somebody come up to me after church and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is her first week serving, and she had Here to Help t-shirt on. And she just said, I just need to tell you, I've been a part of a lot of churches. This is the most strategic thoughtful, uh, purposeful church I've ever been a part of. Wow. And it is helping me grow my faith like never before. Wow. And I've been a part of Pentecostal churches and very charismatic churches, and I love them, and they were great. But uh, nothing against any of it. It's just uh, somebody invited me here. I'm loving it. And um, I didn't realize the church could be so strategic. And it, how important it is. And the passage helped me understand or connect the dots, mm-hmm. my words. She has basically helped me understand why this church is also doing the things it's doing. Mm-hmm. She connected from listening and starting point and put things into practice and then the full surrender, which is mature discipleship. Absolutely. And now um, she's wearing the shirt. And wearing the shirt. And yeah. serving. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, I think it. we sh- should all be, as Christians, very patient with where people are at. Amen. Spiritually. Amen. And their spiritual growth process. Yeah. Everybody's somewhere differently. Yeah. 
Um, hopefully some small group leaders will, will listen to this podcast or at least Sunday sermon um, because it's important for you to identify who's in your small group and where mm-hmm. they are spiritually. Mm-hmm. And so you challenge them differently mm-hmm. uh, according to where they are in their spiritual growth process. Yeah, absolutely. And not just, and I know you say this a lot, should on people. You yeah. should know this. You should act this way. You should. We well, don't do that here. No, don't no. do that. No. Um, I think maybe there could be a little should with with those who've been in the faith a long time with each other, maybe. <laughs> That's an internal mm-hmm. conversation, like husband and wife who've been married and yeah. they're committed to each other and they're working things out. Mm-hmm. But what happens is um, people who've been in the church a long time and are very religious are shooting on people who are just sitting and listening. They're trying to, I don't even know if I want yeah. to have anything to do with this. Yeah. So. It's okay for them to listen. We should not be shitting. Mm-hmm. Also, we as Christians should not be shitting on people who don't believe in who Jesus is, because that's <clears> like <throat> me telling my neighbors how to raise their kids. I mean, mm-hmm. I think you guys should have these rules. Who are you? Yeah, You're totally. Not my family. <laughs> yeah. We do that all the time. Yeah, we absolutely. We do. yell over the fence and tell the neighbors how they should live. Yep. So. Yeah, don't shit on each other, but I think it's okay for us to hold each other accountable, especially as Christians. Yeah. We've agreed to follow Jesus. Now let's wrestle a little bit. Iron sharpens iron. Um, but you're right. We Let's not shit on each other. Yeah, maybe I back myself into a corner. Maybe even at that point we don't should, but we can at least encourage. We can at least challenge. Yeah, we definitely can. Hold each other accountable Accountable. yeah for our spiritual growth absolutely i think the way that you landed the plane too uh with whatever is your next step take it yeah i think it's just it's great that's that's it that is is take it to take that step what's holding you back from you know taking that step i meant to say at the end yogi Berra, but i thought i don't say it nobody knows who he is he was the catcher for the new york yankees back in the Late 40s, 50s, I think early 60s. Mm-hmm. He was part of the group that won, Mickey Mantle and that whole group, that won all those World Series through those years, 7 out of 10 or something like that. Amazing. Yeah. Yogi Berra was the catcher. He has some, get the Yogi Berra uh, sayings or something. He has an entire book. Uh-huh. One of the things he would say is, uh, when you come to a fork in the, lo- uh, in the Lord, when you come into a fork, when you come to a fork in the road, uh-huh. take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yogi Bear has got a bunch of those. Yeah. <laughs> he also so, liked picnic baskets. And so, no, that's Yogi Bear. Yogi <laughs> Bear. So, uh, yeah. So, when you come to a fork in the road, take, take it. it. That's kind of the last point. Just yeah. take it. Yeah. yeah. Take that next step, whatever your next step is. Not taking a step is still taking a step. Take a step. But take a step that take makes it step. better. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Hey, uh, we have one service, three options, 9 30. 11 o'clock and online every single Sunday, and you can watch on demand anytime that you want. Uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that subscribe button to this podcast and share it with a friend who needs to hear it. And same with the sermons. Send that text. You never know uh, what life can change, you know, with somebody hearing a good word. So send that out, and that could be your next step. You know, it's going to be great. So with that said, everybody, thank you for joining in on the podcast this week. We have new episodes coming out every single Tuesday. And again, Andy, thank you, man, for your wisdom. Appreciate it. See you next time. Good to be here. Take care.